There has perhaps never been a time when the galaxy wasn't divided, between empires or republics, Jedi or Sith, between the light or the dark. The battle for balance between the two may be fated to repeat itself for eternity, with every soul in the universe meant to embrace one or the other and play their part in this perpetual conflict. Yet for as long as this struggle has persisted, some have refused to take a side. They have rejected their destiny and in place of an allegiance to any higher purpose, live lives coated in shades of gray, answerable only to themselves. These are the rogues of the galaxy, the freelancers, smugglers, bounty hunters, privateers, and wanderers. They often drift across the galaxy, never staying in one spot for too long, but there is a world where they will always be welcome, a place that has never turned away a stranger, the smuggler's moon of Nar Shaddaa. Had it not been located in the center of Hut space, it's likely Nar Shaddaa would never have become more than an unremarkable backwater. Instead, the moon's strategic location makes it one of the most important financial and trading centers on the entire rim. As the only natural satellite of Nal Hutta, capital world of the Hutt Empire, the moon is the site of constant activity. Ancient refueling spires and loading docks stretch into the upper atmosphere, servicing the innumerable starships that transit through the system each day. The immense wealth that passes through the system has transformed Nar Shaddaa into one of the few ecumenopoly in the galaxy, standing alongside Coruscant, Anaxis, and Taris. Yet the gleaming skyscrapers, pristine skywalks, and artificial ecosystems that define the other city worlds of the galaxy are largely absent on Nar Shaddaa. The planet is dominated by urban decay. Its city districts are congested, polluted slums, riddled with crime and dominated by the Hutt cartels. This pervasive blight is largely masked by the glitzy extravagance of its commercial districts, boasting state-of-the-art casinos, stylish boutiques, and golden statues of hut benefactors. These glamorous offerings serve as a carefully crafted veil, beneath which the rampant criminality of the moon flourishes. Nar Shaddaa has attracted every kind of illicit profession, as well as many corporations looking to avoid the stringent regulations of the core. Some of the galaxy's most advanced technologies are developed here, and often tested beneath the lower levels of the moon's cities. It is within these lowest levels that the last evidence of the Avosi can be found. Displaced from their homeworld by the Huts, this primitive civilization relocated to Nar Shaddaa only to be enslaved. It was the Avosi who built the foundations of the moon's great cities on the promise that they would be free once their work was complete. By the time the Ecumenopolis had formed, however, the Avosi were nearly extinct. For 11,000 years, Nar Shaddaa rivaled the galactic capital of Coruscant, only to be cut off from shifting trade routes and left by the Old Republic to rot. The dwindling oversight attracted the galaxy's criminal element, whose illegal operations kept the moon in operation. Nar Shaddaa's new status as a center of crime was tolerated and even celebrated by the Huts, who reveled in the opportunities such business afforded them. During the Cold War between the revitalized Sith Empire and the Old Republic, the Huts courted both sides. Money and power were traded across the moon, once more transforming Nar Shaddaa into an important political and economic center. The eventual hegemony achieved by the Galactic Republic stifled this growth, causing Nar Shaddaa's fortunes to wilt once again. Through the collapse of the Republic, the rise of the Empire, and the ultimate victory of the Rebel Alliance, Nar Shaddaa continued to endure, riding the waves of one regime through to the next. With the arrival of the Yuzhan Vong, however, the moon's fortunes ran out. Disinterested in the promises of wealth, power, or influence that had kept Nar Shaddaa and the Huts distant from most conflict, the Yuzhan Vong unleashed an intense orbital bombardment, ultimately terraforming it to better suit its conquerors. With the end of the Yuzhan Vong War, Nar Shaddaa was eventually reclaimed by the Huts, although the task of restoring its surface would take decades. Travelers to its surface might marvel at how quickly the moon reverted to its criminal past, once again filled with casinos, experimental labs, and every manner of illicit activity. With reconstruction, though, has come a glimmer of the civilized galaxy. Areas of the smuggler's moon where one could choose to disappear are now regulated and security forces patrol the streets, giving at least the appearance of tighter control. 
It is difficult to imagine that these attempts to bring law and order to Nar Shaddaa might achieve what even the Yuzhan Vong could not. Nar Shaddaa was once described by a visiting Jedi as simultaneously alive with the Force, yet dead to it. It is a place of contrast, of contradiction, home to both light, darkness, and those who tread the path between the two. In the Atlas, the Templin Institute investigates the most storied places from across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. Thank you.